There we go. Right. Okay. Um, so lesson six, I think this is. I did, did this last week. I, can't, I couldn't remember what lesson it is, but I think it's lesson six anyway. Um, so last week we were we were looking at um, stenciling, and the idea of the stenciling was to create a background of foliage uh, to then uh, start putting uh, another stencil on the top of insects. Now the plan is once we've got those things into your um, design or onto your sheet of paper, is to then start to paint carefully back over the top with acrylic paints. Okay, so um, last week some of the things you want to be aware of um, is the way that you use the paint uh, to, when you do the stencil. So if you add any water at all to the acrylic paint, what you need to make sure is that you, um, you mix it up properly and you don't let the paint get runny at all. So it's almost like using the paint neat out of the tube so that then um, when you apply it um, onto the stencil by dabbing gently with a sponge gently, when I say gently, directly from above but then pressing down a bit and then lifting straight off so that the stencil doesn't move around too much. You can tape it down as well which I've, I've done a couple of times um, but um, make sure your paint is a good consistency. We had a few people using paint that was a little bit thin last week so it made it quite difficult um, with the stencils as well. Um, and don't forget as well the other little thing um, that we talked about was the, um, the negative and the positive shapes in a stencil. So um, if I, here's one that I've cut out and I did this one last week. Um, I cut the, the center out of here and then if I dab with my sponge on this surface, I will get a positive um, leaf or positive image. Uh, whereas on the other hand, you can also use the inside of your stencil and it's, it's see-through because it's bright green and I've got a green screen behind me. Um, but you, if you stencil around this, you'll get a negative shape, which means it won't be painted. It'll be just the shape and you'll be able to see the paper or whatever's underneath through. Okay. So um, I've mostly used um, the a positive um, shape of a leaf, a painted leaf, um, to create my um, my sheet, my background, which I'm going to show you after I've just talked very briefly about what we've been doing uh, on the studio wall. So we'll go over there. Here we are. So um, now you'll recognize these from last week. Um, I put these on the screen uh, just to remind you of what we were doing. Or this is the next thing really. A few people jumped straight in there and started doing an insect last week, which is brilliant. Um, so we've got an example of a bug here, uh, an example of a shape cut out of the center um, of the bug and then cut into a little bit more. If you remember, I also showed you some of these um, from an artist called Matt Moore who uses these geometric shapes inside of a bug or inside of the um, inside of his design and I've transferred some of those ideas into a cutout of a bug which could possibly be used as a stencil. Okay, so that's the kind of intention there. Now um, I sh I'll show you the stencils that I've done because I did a little bit more work on the stencil that I was doing last week. Um, so um, here's the what I'm calling the blue bug stencil. Um, so this is actually an a reversed one of um, the the one that I've got here in that I've cut the shape well it's not reversed actually but I've cut the shapes out and left the outside of the board so that I can use the shapes that I've cut out as my imprint or my stencil when I um, print it so <laughs> I'll explain that a little bit more clearly um, in a bit but there's a sheet of cardboard basically with shapes cut out in the shape of a bug. So and I on this one I used grey board which is this kind of board that you get in um, on the back of sketchbooks or in a cereal packet or something like that. Okay and then uh, just this evening before we came online I cut out this one which is a black. Uh, what I've done is, is made it into a bluey black sort of colour 
um, when I've used the stencil. So you can see the outline here and you see the paint around the edges where I've been using it as a stencil. This one was done with the plastic that I, I mentioned which is called Myla. Um, and it's a bit kind of brittle, it's a bit thicker than um, uh, acetate that you might find. Um, but it's quite nice for stenciling because you can clean it off. But I've been lazy and not cleaned it off in this case. Okay, and then the last thing I want to show you is what happened when I um, printed it. Um, so when I say printed, stenciled is what I mean. So the one in the center there is the stencil with the black around it. And the resulting image is the black bug just over here. All right, now you can see here that I've got the blue bug over here has got all the details. The black bug on the other side there has got a silhouette. So what I'm intending to try is to put the detail from this one on top of the silhouette of this one. Okay, uh, and then that go onto the top of my background. Okay, now if you're thinking, oh my gosh, that sounds really complicated, just start with an outline of your insect. I like the black, uh, the one in the center there, the black bug with the, uh, um, with the paint on the outside. Just a silhouette first of all. And then, um, and I think a few people did this, is start to create a design that has cut out shapes um, like the blue one just over here. Uh, and then as long as they're the same size, you should be able to put those together in a design. Uh, and I'm going to be trying that uh, in a short while as well. So you'll be able to see how that progresses. But all the ideas for these shapes came from this artist, from this insect flying around here. Ooh, right. Okay. So um, we'll go over to my desk. Hopefully it's on. Yes, it's on. Woo! Here I am. Right, so this is what I was doing last week when um, we met last time. Um, I used this stencil over here, which is, I haven't cut it off completely from the other stencils that I've got here. This is actually a plastic um, mylar that I mentioned earlier. Um, and it's got the shape cut out the middle. And then I used a second one, which you can see around there, look, just around there. So I've got a third one, but I was going to use, everything always disappears when you need it, but I can use, oh, there it is. So I'm gonna, I was going to use this one again. So you can see I've used a green, a blue mixed with a bit of white to make a pale sort of blue. And then over here I've used a, a plain cobalt blue acrylic paint just over here okay now um, when I did the bug out outline I did uh, kind of I mixed a bit of black and a bit of blue together um, to make a darker color so I'm going to use a little bit of that um, I don't want it to be too dark because I want the bug to be the main sort of focus of the picture um, so you can stick down your um, Particularly if you've got, like I have, a little bit of plastic, you want to be careful that you don't tear it. But, so I'm taking a bit of a risk here, I have to say. I'm going to be really careful taking it off. So I've stuck it down just over here, where about where I want it. And then I'm going to use a brush just to sort of mix a little bit of black in with this blue. Just to sort of make it a bit darker. So it's just going to be a little bit different to the last colour that I used. Um, and then I can start working into it. So I'll just bring this over here. So when you do it, put the put the acrylic. So this is this is actually got no water in it. I'm just using this plane. So you'll find the acrylic, especially in this weather, dries super quick. So I've just put it on the end like that, and then I'm going to press down gently on the surface. But when you've got it in the position you want it, you can press a bit harder. You've got to be careful 
you don't go outside of the cutout area, the main shape around here. Um, and if you've got lots of loose bits, longer bits, then just be careful again that you don't accidentally fold the stencil and stencil a bit that you don't want to. Um, with a larger stencil, what I did was uh, very carefully go around all the edges first and then fill in the gaps in the center. And that, I did that with the big bug that I just showed you a minute ago on the other screen. Okay. Now I've got lots of white left over, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a wash of color back over the top with a brush a bit later on as well. So again, and you saw this last week too, but I thought I'd show you again because I've done a bit more work on it. So we can lift that off of there and we've got another leaf back over the top. Um, what I was thinking as well is I might bring in some green ones a bit later as well into this. Okay, so that the idea is then, um, like I said last week, if you haven't done this yet, is to create a background on which to then paint uh, more things over the top insects and stuff. So um, over here is this is the silhouette of the insect. Mine's really big but you don't you know you don't need to go that big at all. You can do quite a small one if you prefer to. So this is more the, the silhouette um, of the bug um, in that there's no details or design in there at all. Um, you can see just here where I've these long bits where you've got the the antennae or the legs and stuff those these bits just here they can get a bit annoying when it comes to stenciling so i've added an extra bit just to secure it in place to stop it coming up too much when i'm dabbing on the top okay so that was that and then just before we came online and it's already dry i did this stencil and it's got a nice texture um, to it as well. Um, so what I'm going to do now, and this is what I wanted to try out, is I've got this one that I did last week, uh, and you'll remember me cutting it out, I, I still had quite a bit to do, but um, I've since then cut it. Um, so what I'm going to do is try and line it up, and I'm not expecting it to be perfect at all, but I can get it reasonably close. Um, to make a, some, some, something like an interesting design that I can then work into a bit later. So, somewhere about there. Line it up. This will be fun, seeing if this works. So I'm going to get some green what I might do as well while I'm here is put a bit of tape so that um, it stays where I want it. So I'm going to mix a little bit of white in because I've got a black background. I'm going to put a little bit of white with the um, green paint that I'm going to use. Partly because it will help it stand out and partly because white paint is quite opaque. Is very this white paint is opaque so it will mean that it will um, sit on the surface and not bleed or the colors from underneath won't bleed in uh, quite as much so should have got a spoon and we get a bit of that there we go probably a bit more than I wanted there and this has got the lid that works okay. Mix that in there. So I've got my two colours. I shouldn't need as much paint for this because it's just the um, just the details that we're stenciling. So I'm gonna mix in some of these together. So we get something 
a bit lighter and of course you can use any colours and then once you've done done it once you can do another stencil over the top of that but just shift it to the side slightly as well so there we go there's a bit of colour with a green let's find somewhere to prop my brush and I've got my sponge here I already I did give this a little test earlier in the week and it seemed to be okay so I've got my paint on there and I'm just gonna dab on the surface so remember this this is a slightly different um, stencil in that it's made of card the mylar that I was using earlier is thinner um, so it requires a little bit more work to dab in those details so really pay attention to how much paint has gone through um, on the on the first one of these I did I used a little bit of water which um, which actually meant that the paint seeped underneath the stencil so try to keep the paint reasonably pure I mean I've just used it straight out of the tube or tub that I've got here you don't want to flood your sponge too much either just get a reasonable amount on there and you'll see that it comes through he says quite nicely okay All right, so um, while I'm doing this, um, uh, if you'd all like to crack on and get started, I'll stop again in a second and uh, just show you what happened with it. You'll be able to see it anyway, obviously. Um, looks like a lot of you are already working anyway. Um, but has anyone got any questions? Um, oh, gosh, there's Pragerty. I didn't hear her arrive. Let's put her on. There we go. So has anyone got any questions at this point? Yes, Eve, hello. Hi there. Um, did you concentrate on doing the leaves then last week? Yes, mainly, although because I'd already done it, I started to um, I started to work on this insect as well, and then a few other people started to do that too. So, okay. you know, you can work on either one, you know, either one that you want to. Um, it's all going in the same direction anyway, so if that makes Actually, sense. my daughter yeah. came across it in the loft. Has got an old. It's ad, it's advertising something else. It's a yeah a kind of light box. Yeah. That, so I put that on, and I was able to stick one of my original photos underneath, and it's it's like thin card. Yeah. I could still see the the thing, so that's kind of s speeded me up. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. So you've used the light box to help you make your stencil. Well, I'm just all I've got at the moment is I've got the drawing on the top, which I'm just in the process of starting to cut out. Yes, okay. Um, and then I'll perhaps have a go. I haven't had a chance to print out any of the leaf shapes, so I might just call some up here and just draw them freehand. Yeah, I mean that's what that is what I did actually. Um, <laughs> there's some from the screen printing here, um, and when I was doing the demo, I just literally drew drew yeah. something out like this. Right. I can show you that I'll show you the screen print ones that I did um, if you remind me because I always say I'm going to do stuff and I forget because we get into it so yeah I'll show you the ones we've been doing at um, Rawns as well if you like it's all very similar it's just we've got a screen at Rawns and we haven't got one online okay yeah that's fine yeah thanks very much and really? I've managed to find some quite big paper it oh great be... Uh, and I guess it's probably A1. Yeah. So it's probably what, four, four, A3. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, A1. Yeah. yeah. So I thought well, that's going to be quite a nice size to work with if I've got large size um, stencils. Yeah. 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 Just use, yeah, you'd just be using a bit more of the old paint, I suppose. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks, Jamie. All right. Yeah. Pleasure.
Jamie, I've only got the negative shapes. Do I have to cut some positive? Um, you do you mean um, you've got this, or do you mean you've well, I got... got the bit round? I haven't got the bit round it because I've cut them all like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I remember you saying so. So you've got this mostly, haven't you? Yes. You, you've got these. Yes. So I'm a bit fur, further away tonight. Yeah. So this is what. Um, oh gosh, <laughs> I put a bug on top of it. Look, but um, this this is basically what I did um, with the positive shape that you'd cut out of the middle. So what yeah. you've got, you can stencil around the outside like this. Look, and keep just keep going and fill up the whole sheet like that. Yeah. So, but I could put some positive shapes. Oh, that's good. It's fine. No, she says it's fine. It's absolutely fine. You've got a negative in there. They're fine. Seriously, you're not. You're okay. Okay. Hello. <laughs> she actually, Louise did after art college. Yeah. Train for two days in London with a lady who sent them out to Verbia, Switzerland. Really. And they stenciled all the ski chalets. Yeah. Wow. What, and then what? Do some art or something, or? No, they they, they actually stencil the doors and the. Oh, um, I see. Right, yeah. Drew freezes and everything, and ragged the actual apartments and the ski chalets in Verbia. Crikey, that that was fun then. I wasn't there. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I, I like what you did, so I'm going to cut in a uh, positive shape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a little bit easier when you do it. Just leave a, um, just leave some space around the outside so that you've got plenty of room to put your sponge on. Like this one's quite nice. You see what I mean? You've got space here where your sponge yeah. is going to land. So if, you know, yeah, yeah. So if you do it too close, these ones, the one I just used, this one was a little bit too close to the edge, so I had to be quite careful with that one. Okay. Right, so I'll start cutting out again. Hooray! Let's do some cutting. What I've done, Jamie, is um, I, on, on, here's, that's the bug that I was copying. I've cut, I've left out some of these really thin ones and just kept to the main thickish legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, and when I'm, what I noticed on yours, yeah. uh, what well, you cut it out from, yeah, uh, yeah is how you... You've got the, they look a bit articulated, so you've got yeah. the end. So look, yeah. yeah, so what I've done, because when I did a stencil before, I'll show you this, this one that I did on paper. This is just naught, and it's all falling apart now. Um, this one, look, um, had these long bits coming yes. off of it here. So yeah. instead of do it like that, these long bits flapping around everywhere yeah. what I did was look I just I Excellent. I left a little bit of something there yeah. just oh, to hold it yeah, yeah just to hold it together yeah. so that's there you go look that's um that's yeah. how it looks when I put the silhouette yeah. and the next one on top so when that's a bit drier what I want to do is paint into this as well so I want to just I'll just use brushes for that. I'll just get some brushes yeah. out and things, and I'll do some blending. And so we'll do a bit of painting on tops and painting skills and things, yeah. um, Very good. and make it pop a little bit and make it like come to life. Um, I remember now. I'll show, while I remember, I will show you the the ones that we did at the screen printing. Loads of stuff hanging around here. This craft knife I've got really digs into your fingers. So I've just had to put a plaster on just to. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they can be quite. Um, yeah, I've got these surgical ones rather than mm. the exacto ones uh, are the ones that are quite good. Well, I think this is probably a blunt one. Oh right, okay. Fish.
So with a screen, this is what you can... So these uh, were screen prints of uh, leaves from the garden. And you, you put them... That, so these are used as the mask to stop the ink getting to the paper and you end up producing these shapes with real leaves. And then with the leaves that are left over, you can turn them over and print them. I'll come in a bit closer so you can see what I mean. You can get all these lovely details of the leaves, and that could be a possible background. There's another stencil. Uh, oops. We did a lot of these last week. Well, I did these before I went away, actually. But, um, oh, wow. Yeah, so... This is a printed leaf that had screen print ink on it, which was nice. So you actually put the leaf on the screen print? Yeah, and use it as a stencil, like we're doing now. And then when when um, when I've done that, I peel the leaves off the screen because they stick to the screen. Yes. Take yeah. them off, turn them over, and then put just press them. Ah, and you okay. get you get a print, which is really nice. These were the stencils that I did on the screen here, look. Um, and what we're doing is we're, we're using about two or th two to four stencils. So once you've done something like that, you can then overlay and do another print on top. Mm. So you get the, the different shapes and the leaves layered on top of each other. We've got another one mm. of those. And you can see the insect <laughs> through the middle there as well. And there was a second one there as well. So um, you've seen me um, add the shapes on top of the bug. And I'm just adding a few more leaves to this background, which I'll be hopefully working on a little bit next week. Um, the main thing that I end up doing in this lesson, though, is painting the insect um, that you saw me do as a test just earlier. Um, so we'll look at that in a few minutes. but. Um, here you can see I've used uh, some different colours. The only colours I'm using on here is a cobalt blue and a fatalio green um, to create this with a little bit of yellow and that darker blue leaf up there was had a slight bit of black in it as well. So we're just creating um, varied um, colours on here using a limited um, colour palette or various uh, tones and tints of a colour I should say. So here I had um, applied the uh, stencil over. I can do this bug as many times as I want at this size using the stencils. Um, but what I thought it'd be interesting to do is um, take inspiration from the artist you can see just over there on the uh, right of the screen with the white background and um, work back over the top of this uh, using some acrylic paint. Um, so again I've limited the color palette um, perhaps what I'd like to do later is paint uh, a similar bug back over the top of the background um, that you saw earlier on there um, and then paint with these colors on top so the idea being that we limit the color palette we use similar colors to the background and we create this kind of almost camouflage effect on there as well but with this really decorative insect that I'm creating here right now. Um, so I, I knew I had some ideas about what I wanted to do, but I thought um, in this circumstance what I would do is just see what happens with the way that I approach these different shapes that I've created from um, the insect, the original insect. So the idea is that it's not going to look like the real one, it's going to look different and it's going to look um, more of a fantasy insect if you like but um, or a decorative um, kind of idea of an insect too um, so I've started to just apply the same colors that you saw me with earlier and a little bit of yellow as well just to um, spruce it up a bit and draw attention to the insect um, away from the background later you can see I'm not using the background here obviously this is um, purely a test to show everybody um, how um, the idea would work but also to give me a chance to have a play around um, with this idea as well before going on to the background a bit later on so next week I'll be doing this but on top of the background 
Um, so there's a little bit of blending going on here. So um, it's quite easy to do the blending whilst the paint is um, a little bit wet. I'm adding water to the paint now rather than using it neat, um, which I was doing when I was stenciling. Um, and that just helps the paint to flow a little bit better. Now I'm working over quite a dark background on this as well. So um, I've been use, adding uh, quite often or most of the time adding a little bit of white into whatever colour um, that I'm using and that helps the colour to sit nicely on the top. And then here you can see with these dots I wanted to add a bit more detail so I've gone in with a bit of the black, blacky blue that I mixed earlier on to create the, the stencil. Um, silhouette of the insect. So I kind of like these flowy marks um, or, or lines which are kind of reminiscent of the legs of the insect that I put on the front there and all these kind of thinner, hairier, more delicate looking shapes um, I'm adding in as well. And you can see that you know once I've painted an area it doesn't mean that I, I then have to leave it. I can I can come back and say right yeah okay I'm gonna put in uh, a little bit of detail on top of what I've just done and it works beautifully when you've got either a black or a bit of white uh, mixed in with your paint it paints over really nicely so um, you may be thinking oh well you know you've done this stencil and everything and now you just paint it over the whole thing the idea is you know that I could um, I can duplicate this I could um, and create a different insect somewhere else uh, just by grabbing hold of my stencils doing the stencil quickly and then I could just spend the time having fun doing this sort of thing painting everything in um, one thing to note as well of course is that the stencils weren't perfectly aligned over the top of the um, the silhouette so the shapes weren't aligned perfectly but I can use that really to make it look a bit more interesting but I can also go back correct join change areas that um, uh, need a bit of neatening up or just that I changed my mind about really um, so there's flexibility within there you know um, sometimes things don't work perfectly but you can take advantage of those things to make your design uh, more um, unique and interesting as well so here on the on the legs here what I decided to do was um, I, I put a little bit of like this sort of turquoisey green over the top using white and vitaleo green um, lightened it up and then further highlighted it with more white paint in the center and that kind of give it an almost three-dimensional quality too. so here's where I was just just explaining something to a student um, here as well. Uh, so I carry on a little bit longer um, with this now but um, that's basically as far as I get in this lesson. I may finish off the rest of this insect next week um, or I may just start on with a new one next week as well but um, it's been really good fun uh, creating it and um, as you can see I, I really enjoyed adding in all the decorative elements into this thing too. It is now not a black bug but a crazy decorative kind of insect if you like. So a lot a quite a process to create but a lot of fun to do at the same time. So have a go. See if you can do it. And I'll see you all in next lesson. Have a fantastic week.